adventure. I'm just now leaving my campsite. Uh, I stayed at the, I believe it's called Lower Lee Vining campground. It was $14 a night, which is totally worth it for me. Uh, my plan was to wild camp, but a lot of the places that you can wild camp, there's just no shade. And so it's worth it for me to pay the $14. Um, it, great site, 51 camp spots. They are kind of close together, but if you go further back within the campground, closer towards the river, there, um, there are bigger spots. And I actually had a really nice large site uh, with a friendly little, not little, blue jay who kept coming in and trying to steal my food. It is right at the base. Not right at the base, but it is at the base of Yosemite. And there is cell service, but it is spotty. But I am off to about five miles back down the 395 and I am going to head over to Mono Lake. And the idea is to put my paddleboard in the water and check out some tufas. Depending on how the weather conditions are, uh, we'll determine on whether or not that happens. So we'll find out. All right. <clears throat> I made it out here to Mono Lake and there's nobody here. It is early and there is no wind. So the launch point would be here off of Navy Beach and then going and checking out those tufas over there in the distance. <clears throat> and just kind of hugging the shoreline because it can get pretty dangerous um, if the winds start picking up and I do not want to be caught out there. Now way out there is an island called Poa? I don't know. P-O-P-A-O-H-A. And it says that it's seasonally closed for um, the nesting birds that are out here from April 1st through August. So even if I wanted to go out there, I couldn't, but I don't because it's pretty far out there. Doesn't look like it, but it's about two and a half miles, I think. So I guess it's time to blow up the paddleboard and head over to some tupas. I do need to be careful because um, it is the breeding season and you have to stay something like 200 yards away from the, the nesting birds. So I'm going to be very aware of that. I'm going to go down by the water really quick and check that out. There is no wind. So I should be good to launch. I'm nervous. No time like the present, I guess. I was actually just reading this sign over here and it says that from here to the island is three miles one way and to um, for the migrating birds you need to give them at least one mile so here's the island here and this is the radius here that you have to give them and it tells you one two three miles so it's three miles so one mile for the island and then Probably where those tufas are over there, you gotta give them 200 yards. A famous author once wrote, This water is not good for bruised places and abrasions of the skin. We had a valuable dog. He had raw places on him. He had more raw places on him than sound ones. He was the rawest dog I almost ever saw. He jumped overboard one day to get away from the flies. But it was bad judgment. In his condition, it would have been just as comfortable to jump into a fire. The alkali water nipped him in all the raw places simultaneously, and he struck out for the shore with considerable interest. He yelped and barked and howled as he went, and by the time he got to the shore there was no bark in him, for he had barked the bark all out of his inside. 
and the alkali water had cleaned the bark off all of his outside, and he probably wished he had never embarked on any such enterprise. He ran round and round in a circle, and pawed the earth and clawed the air, and threw double somersaults, sometimes backwards and sometimes forward, in the most extraordinary manner. He was not a demonstrative dog, as a general thing, but rather a grave and serious turn of mind, and I never saw him take so much interest in anything before. He finally struck out over the mountains, at a gait which we estimated at about 250 miles an hour, and he is going yet. This was about nine years ago. We look for what is left of him along the way here every day. Mark Twain. I have a missing piece to the GoPro, so I'm going to put it in this. I have no idea if you guys will be able to hear what I'm saying. Guess we'll find out. So I'm launching my paddleboard at Navy Beach on the south side of the lake, and as I make my way onto the lake, the thing I kept thinking was what kind of creatures are circling below me, ready to pounce, and of course I already knew the answer, brine shrimp. Scary, tiny, micro little sea monkeys that are sure to eat me alive if I fall in. I'm totally kidding, sort of. The lake water is home to nothing else but brine shrimp, which are harmless. No fish, nothing. Although the alkali flies do enter the water in a protective air bubble to lay their eggs. The ecosystem here at Mono Lake is very unique. As I said, there are no fish, but alkali flies and trillions of brine shrimp, which are eaten by the migratory birds that not only come here as a stopping point, but the countless others that come here to breed. Once in the water and over my fear of dying, I head towards the left and try to hug the shoreline as much as possible, because if I'm too far from shore and the wind blows, I don't want to get pushed out further. People have been stranded out here because of high winds, and a few have even died. In many places, the water is really shallow, and you can see bubbles coming from the bottom, almost like boiling water. Those are petrified springs, and long story short, that is how the tufa form over time. Mono Lake is a vast lake that once was much larger than it is now. It was formed more than 760,000 years ago, and it's 69 square miles. For many years, the lake was fed by snow runoff from the mountains, but in 1941, Los Angeles diverted the freshwater runoff, and in doing so, the lake water has evaporated, and in turn, the lake has not only shrunk, but has become so salty that it is two times saltier than that of the ocean. Because of the impact on the lake due to the decision to divert the freshwater runoff, the Mono Lake Committee won a legal battle, and in 1994, Los Angeles was forced to start partially replenishing the lake. Some final words from Mark Twain are as follows. In speaking on the peculiarities of Mono Lake, I ought to have mentioned that at intervals all around its shores stand picturesque turret-looking masses and clusters of whitish coarse grain rock that resembles inferior mortar dried hard. And if one breaks off fragments of this rock, he will find perfectly shaped and thoroughly petrified gulf eggs deeply embedded in the mass. How did they get there? I simply state the fact, for it is fact, and leave the geological reader to crack that nut at his leisure and solve the problem in his own fashion. I am going to be very mindful and not get too close to the tufas. I'm gonna just kind of go around a little bit and head out over that way. On the shoreline to the Jeep. Definitely give this a try. Do it first thing in the morning because they say that the winds can pick up unexpectedly anytime after noon and that's when it becomes very very dangerous. I think I got in the water at 7 30 and yeah it got a little windy but nothing too crazy. 
heavy. And it's a cool experience. Definitely not as smooth of a landing as I had hoped. <laughs> Let's go check out the tufas from the land. So now I'm at the South Tufa Trail and there is a $3 fee to check out the area, which is reasonable. And right now, no, oh, there's one other car in the parking lot, but I don't think they're headed this way. I think they are actually done. So let's go check out the tufas from the land. Over there is where I was when I was paddleboarding, and I paddleboarded all the way over here to this group of tufas. So these signs are basically telling you that in 1959, this is where the lake's edge was, and you can just tell how small it's gotten, even though it's still massive. And those things are all, all along the trail, um, telling you over the years how much water has evaporated and how um, how much smaller the lake has gotten. So this little kiosk right here is saying that um, all those little bubbles that I was seeing when I was out there paddle boarding, it says that it's um, underwater springs near existing tufa. The fresh water will look like vegetable oil swirling up in the salty lake water. When the lake has been calm for several several days, you may see delicate new tufa crystals forming around these springs. Saltier than the sea. Dip your fingers into the water. It feels slippery. Put a little on your tongue. It tastes both salty and bitter. You are experiencing minerals washed into the lake by streams and springs. Two key ingredients are sodium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. These and other minerals make Mono Lake two and a half times saltier than the ocean and a hundred times as alkaline. Those are all flies. They don't bother you. They just, as you walk by, fly up and then fly back down. So the ecosystem here is rather unique. There's not much that lives in this lake uh, besides brine shrimp. I don't think that there's fish, but there's the brine shrimp, the alkali flies, and the birds. and. What happens is like, and bacteria, the bacteria will break down, the algae will break down the bacteria and then the flies and the brine shrimp will feed on the algae and then the birds will feed on the brine shrimp. And it's just this continuous cycle. I'm not exactly sure where I was when I was in the water. None of this looks familiar, but then again, I'm looking at it from a completely different angle. So I'm not sure if this is the right spot, but Nonetheless, you get the idea. That's it. My experience out here on Mono Lake. I've visited this place a couple of times before, never on the water, just around the shoreline. And I would say being on the water is definitely cool. And if you have a kayak, a paddleboard, something that doesn't have a motor on it, then you are encouraged to come out here and check out the tufa. Just be mindful of the time because you cannot get within 200, 250 yards of the tufas in the water. I don't know about the shoreline because, I mean, I'm right here, but um, 
you cannot get within 250 yards of the tufa because of the birds. It's their breeding season. And the, where is it? The island that's out there somewhere, you cannot get within one mile of the island during breeding season. And it's about a three mile kayak one way. So thank you so much for hanging out with me at Mono Lake. I hope that you will consider sticking around and checking out some of my other adventures that I'm about to go on. Consider subscribing. I hope that you find some adventures of your own. I'll see you next time.